We are at Understanding the Times 2017, Minneapolis St. Paul area, October 7th. And I have the privilege of having at my side two of my speakers. And I just came up with a lot of issues I want to discuss with them, fire some questions at them. I think some of these will be questions that are on your mind as well as mine. And so I'm just going to start talking and, and you guys just you know, chime in as the Lord leads you. Uh, and I, I'm just starting with you, Amira, because you and I have talked not only privately, but you've addressed our conference on the situation in Europe, and you're going to do that again here. But honestly, there are believers in Europe. There are small pockets. Yeah, but how do believers. they cope with what you <clears throat> have described to me? Because you you were in, we, we recorded with you in Berlin, yes. and you talked about empty faces yes. and all that. How do the believers cope with this? Well, it's hard. I mean, they, they really hang on to anything that comes from outside of Europe to keep them going because Europe is literally spiritually dead. Yeah. I, I said, I think I said on the radio, if the rapture would take place exactly. in Europe now, most people wouldn't even know that it happened. I mean, it's that bad. Um, but uh, I had the privilege of being invited to s uh, small churches, yeah. small gatherings, for example, in Italy, in, in a city called San Remo, which is the, yeah. the place where... And, and yeah, so it's small, tiny little pocket of, I don't know, 40, 50 people that came from five different churches. Yeah. And you see how thirsty and hungry they are to, to, you know, to, more, to know more. Because, look, we can see things because we are two steps yeah. you know, back looking at the whole picture. But when you live in the heart of yeah. Europe, it's almost, it's almost hard for you to realize how dark it is. Yeah. I can't imagine. Can we pray for them in any specific way? I mean, I mean, we we, we just need to pray for them, uh, just as we see in the scriptures that we need. They need to persevere. They need to hold on to the end, and they need to be encouraged in the blessed hope, and not in anything else. Because really, truly, there's yeah, nothing. Else. There's nothing. To both of you, but let me start with JD. There is so much going on of biblical significance right now from. We've got Mideast alignment, we've got nations abandoning Israel, we've got creation groaning with some of the, the natural events that are going on. Um, I, frankly, I could go on, because those of us who are watching the Times were almost overwhelmed, which is why we, we have a big crowd today, because they're concerned about what's happening. But first, let me ask you, what do you see, J.D. Farag, what do you see as the primary, shall we say, God ringing a bell, pay attention, here's the warning sign I'm sending you, here's the birth pain I might be having allow, allowing to happen. What's the primary thing you see? In a word, yeah. collective, collective. When you take everything that is happening globally, collectively, it becomes abundantly clear that this is it. This is what Jesus said. Okay. When you see these things begin. collectively begin to come to pass, what things, these things mm -hmm. that are happening, it is becoming increasingly more difficult to deny <laughs> that what we see taking place was what Jesus said. When you see these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption trials tonight. Amir, what, are you, what would you be... It's, it's overwhelming. It is overwhelming. Yeah. But in, in, I, I believe that everything around us points at that mm -hmm. direction. But the enemy is also very sneaky mm -hmm. in, in trying to cause us to hang on to those things rather than to hang on to that which we need to do until he comes, which is to occupy. Occupy. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I'm all about encouraging believers and encourage, encouraging them to occupy and encouraging them to not get too burdened with what's happening. Um, but, you know, all these things that are shaking the earth up, it affects everyone, their families, their loved ones, their friends, their employment. It affects everything they do. And it's hard for us not to get down unless we're looking up, you know. And you that's know, the pr that's privilege what, we have. That's where Colossians 3 yeah. kicks, kicks in. Seek the things which are above. And I mean, in, in Hebrews uh, 12, we need to run the race uh, looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We, we can't look at the things around us and find encouragement in those. 
I mean, there's really darkness and darkness and apostasy and, 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 and it's just, it's terrible. But we have a great hope. But there's also something else. Please let me have your feedback on it. And that is, there's an attitude of a kind of whole home business as usual. Um, sort of a so what. And I don't know how to break through that. But that's prophesied too. That's kind of days of Noah. Correct. Type things. Correct. And I see a lot of that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think most in the church are there. You're a pastor. <laughs> It's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. You do see that uh, people are going about their lives as if nothing's going to happen. Exactly. And, exactly. Uh, that is, uh, to me, I think one of the reasons for the clarion call to sound the alarm. Because you have, it's an interesting contrast. You have on one side of the table this uh, constituency of Christians, for lack of a better way of saying it, that are going about their lives as if nothing's going to happen. Then on the other side, you have Christians that are starting to wake up, mm -hmm. thankfully. Thankfully. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we can Please. also blame a lot of lunatics on the side of Bible prophecy. Yes, indeed. That causes many people to not even want to associate themselves. Exactly. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Yes. Um, and we've had a little season of that again. and uh, But we've had them uh, way back... I think 1988, we had Minister Edgar Wisenhunt, and then he changed it. Well, it was 1980. I mean, they keep juggling the dates and everything, and that makes it even more embarrassing. Imagine what the unbelieving world thinks of, of us when they see these kinds of things. I think that's a tragedy as well. Um, to both of you, and Pastor J.D. is going to be speaking on the rapture here at this event. Um, Pre-trib is under attack, simple as it can be. You talk... Look, you call it satanic attack. Yes. I think that's totally that's totally appropriate. But you know, when we say that, JD, we make some people so mad because it, I mean they can't they can't understand why we would say it's a satanic attack. Right. To me, uh, it is satanic because of the effect that it has when you uh, have such confusion from mm -hmm. the author of confusion. Yeah. You have accusation from the accuser of the brethren, and you have lies from the father of lies. And it just creates such a confusion. I had an interesting uh, comment from someone recently. They said, why don't you teach the other views? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I heard it said this way, just real quickly. The way they would train bank tellers to spot a counterfeit is to have them so familiar with the genuine, where they touch it, they feel it, they count it, they smell it, and then they'll insert a counterfeit bill, and they know, wait a minute, that's not right. I was listening to a, a, a guy on TV, I never do this, in, in, in the hotel, when I'll get this channel in Hawaii, uh, and I was watching this guy, and within five seconds I thought, oh my goodness, is this what people are watching? This, is, this isn't the gospel, it's like the Apostle Paul says, it's a different gospel, which is no gospel at all. I'm building on what you just said. You, you're asked sometimes to maybe preach on the other ver the other interpretations of the radio. I'm asked to do radio all the time, or I'm getting emailed all the time. Why don't you do a program explaining what the pre-wrath rapture is, all of them? I, I don't want to confuse people with nonsense. I hate to be so blunt. <laughs> Is that okay if I be that way? <laughs> yes, it is, Jim. <laughs> I always ask people, how do you want to get to heaven? Rare, medium, yeah. well, medium well, or well done? There you go. And that's basically, what do you want me to teach? Yeah. Uh, that, that you're going to be half dead, or you're going to be headless when yeah, you get there? Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, knowing that we're you know, not destined to the wrath of God, and that He will pull us or take us out of, not through, the hour of trial, I, I just don't see how we can teach anything else. Of course. And also... In, Pastor J.D. will teach about the imminence of the rapture. But once you start the tribulation, imminence is gone to the garbage. I mean, exactly. there, is a, there you go. I mean, we can tell you exactly if it's mid-trib, you know exactly when exactly. it is. If it's post-trib, you know exactly. Right. So I, even from that perspective, it makes sense that you would not go and, and go about the other uh, you know, options, in a sense. There's nowhere in the Bible that is even hints that we should be anticipating the Antichrist as believers. There's not a <clears throat> reference you can even stretch. 
I think that the confusion is Israel and the church. Yeah, it is. It and is. that's where it, it all, I mean, people yeah. misinterpret Matthew 24 and Luke 21 yeah. and, and Mark 13, yeah. thinking that some of that which is describing Israel is the church. And yeah. you need to be very, you know, why would he talk about not to run on the Sabbath day and all of that when it's not about Jewish people to begin with, in Israel to begin with. And to me, um, the, the lack of very solid teaching of the word causes confusion that leads people to take all the other options. And, and just so you know, it's funny, it's the 21st century. More people can read and write nowadays than any other period in the history, yet biblical illiteracy is almost higher than ever. And it's funny, I mean, they didn't have it 2,000 years ago. They hardly knew how to read, right. yet... Paul could quote you verses like that. He never had a Bible. I mean, that's right. And he could give you everything because they were in the Word and on the spot. I mean, nowadays everyone has five, six Bibles in his house, yet they don't. They're not in the Word, and we're not in the Word. And you know, study that brings so much confusion. And I want to ask you in just a minute here a little bit about America and America and prophecy and and some related questions to that, but. Pastor J.D., I find that an awful lot of people, um, Christians, are not eternity-minded. Mm. They're pleasure-minded. Mm. They're, what can I get out of life right now? And, and I think I can't imagine living that way because um, everything's in such turmoil. And without being eternity-focused, I personally couldn't make it. How, is you, how do you as a pastor deal with that? I'm going to take it a step further. Please. And as candidly as I can say that, and I've shared this uh, uh, in the past, but I would literally, this is not hyperbole, if it were not for uh, the blessed hope of the soon return of Jesus Christ and the rapture, and again, please know, and God knows my heart, I would go literally insane. Mm-hmm. I would lose my mind. I wouldn't live. I wouldn't be able to handle what my eyes see. The Same the here. evil and the darkness is such that, and the likes of which we've never seen in human history. And the Lord knows that. And uh, one of the things the Lord's been ministering to me as of late is that He eagerly awaits mm -hmm. uh, His return for His bride. And uh, because he knows that uh, how perilous it's going to be and is in the last days. Yeah. Amir, where do you see, and, and you're speaking on this topic, um, but a lot of the viewers don't know that and they don't have the details, but where do you see America in the last days? And you can share. Well, in my message, I'm basically going to take, first of all, Obviously, the name America is not in the scripture, so I could just, you know, get to the pulpit, say it's not in the Bible, turn around and leave. But um, I always examine, when we talk about America in Bible prophecy, then we first have to tackle what is Bible prophecy is all about. And if it's about, you know, Messiah, it's about Israel, then where, where is America in relation yeah. to that? So that's how we need to tackle this issue. And I believe that uh, we see, like in many other cases in the past, a world power that starts great with the people of Israel and ends up falling in the deception of the enemy and Israel stands on its way to achieve something greater or bigger than in their mind. And I believe that the, 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 the first empire that wanted to eradicate Israel from the land as a nation was the Babylonian one. I believe the mantle of the Babylonian empire moved from generation to generation, from empire to empire, all the way mm -hmm. until the modern days got to England and to the U.S. But I see within our very days right now how the mantle goes back to Europe yes. because an accident took place in their efforts to use America as the main perpetrator of, or, or shaker and mover of the globalist agenda. And that accident that took place last November yeah. changed everything for them. And now that accident caused everyone to shift back to Europe because this is where it's going to end up. So 
I think that the two messages today will actually right. complete one another in a sense. So America, in a way, played ED a significant role, and it's coming, it's walking out of the stage uh, before our very eyes as a world power, and something that has to happen, obviously. And we're going right. to talk about the options. But, but it is, no, it's, it, America's back to nationalist, not globalist, and, and that's it. It's going to be, uh, you know, happening soon. And well, I mean, there are people who, who claim they, I mean, they believe America is Babylon and Revelation. I, I don't. But they've got America pictured all throughout the Bible, even perhaps as the young lions in Ezekiel 38, 39. We don't know. Um, there's not a clear, blatant message about America. But she has to play a role. We all know that. And I'm, just, I'm not leaving this topic quite yet, though, J.D., because Donald Trump, and that's who Amir is talking about, he's the incredible accident that happened in November of a year ago. And no one, God had, first of all, he's got a sense of humor, but he, he just, no one can believe, it. to this day, no one can believe this happened. It had to have happened for a reason. And you frequently say, Donald Trump is going to speed God's time clock. Why don't you explain what you mean by that? So, uh, the reason why I believe that and say that is because he is, of all presidents throughout U.S. history, the one mm -hmm. that has the best relationship with Israel vis-a-vis -vis his son-in-law, of all people, yes. Jared Kushner. So uh, Trump, in effect, could do that which the likes of one Barack Hussein Obama could have never mm -hmm. done. Right, right. So um, I keep a very close, watchful eye on Trump. Uh, I voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. I love Trump. And I love his pro-Israel, mm -hmm. pro-Christian policies and platforms. But uh, still, that's... Uh, where I kind of step back because, and I'm going to talk about it today, I still can't get my hands around his push for a peace agreement, mm -hmm. which he seems to, under the banner of the ultimate deal, the or ultimate the deal, deal the of ultimate the deal maker. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that to me is. Um, uh, uh, that's my problem with, and that's why I believe it is, that he could, in effect, speed up the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Let me get Amir's take on Donald Trump and the peace process. Um, Americans, quite frankly, Americans who, are, who love Israel, put it that way, we're sick to death of the constant efforts to divide Israel to two-state solution, the whole thing, we're tired of it. Where do you think it's going? Uh, it's interesting because I I had a chance to view the um, paper that Kushner was uh, mm. proposing to the sides mm. and to look at the different uh, points there. Um, first of all, there's nothing new there. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, if there's anything, it brings back everything to interim solution and not a final solution because they understand that under this current circumstances a final solution cannot be achieved so the interim solution which by the way is rejected automatically by the palestinians they're True. not they are never going to settle for anything less than everything now yeah. it's been like that for 70 years um that interim agreement is not even including jerusalem in it as something we discuss on the table. It's more of a let's build confidence, let's uh, talk about economical ties with the rest of this moderate Sunni Arab world. Let's not deal and tackle the big issues right now at this moment. Let's talk about in a sort of a, a, a graduate, a gradual uh, a, a way of reaching an agreement. Now, why am I less concerned? Mm -hmm. Because two things. Uh, I know who is on the other side of the table, and I know that um, 
for the last 70 years, ever since 1947, mm -hmm. the Arabs said consistently no to anything that is less than almost 100% of what they demand. And what they get is always shrinking, it's smaller and smaller and smaller, but they keep saying no because they understand that if they say yes to anything less than Jerusalem in their hand, the East Jerusalem, the old city, and anything less than uh, acknowledging that they no longer have any right to ask to return to any other place within the sovereign state of Israel, and acknowledging that Israel is a Jewish state, that's it. It's going mean, to be the end of, of, of them as Muslims in the Middle East. So something has, in my eyes, to happen to cause Islam to be watered down okay. in such a way that it, like a reformation in, 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 in Islam, that will get them to accept such a thing, because as long as Islam is what it is now... What do you think that is? I believe it's the war. God mega? Correct. God mega? It's That's plausible. Uh, and I, um, but here's the, the key word again, yeah, if I ahead. can just Please. narrow it down, that word is uh, destruction, uh, and uh, suddenly, and what I'm going to talk about today, presupposing that Amir doesn't, because uh, yeah. <laughs> no, he not. goes before me. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not even dealing, don't worry. Okay. So. <laughs> I, Ezekiel, I need to listen to what you're going to talk about before no, no, I... No, 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 you don't worry. So, uh, but uh, I'm of the belief, and I'm, I'm becoming increasingly more convinced that the sudden destruction of First Thessalonians 5.3 is simultaneously with the sudden disappearance in the rapture. Because that just seems to uh, fit and reconcile uh, more easily with this scenario. Uh, that Amir is, uh, you know, painting on the canvas. It does seem very plausible to me that it will come suddenly, and it will come that way, and at that time. I, I don't think we can fathom the uh, spider of Left Behind movies and all the, the world after the rapture. I'm not sure I want to try to visualize the world after the rapture. And I'm talking ten minutes after the rapture. Mm -hmm. Now, I get it. And like you said, parts of parts, parts of, of the, the world, world, no one will know that the rapture no is consequential. <laughs> Other parts of the world, particularly yeah. our country Correct. here, yeah. um, stock market, yeah. just everything hits the fan. That might be the cause of America stepping down from superpower. I think so. Yeah, so. I think so. That's again. That's, that's the hope plot. for. Well, the hope for a scenario. Yeah, <laughs> I like that one better than North Korea. Yeah, especially yeah, exactly. living in Hawaii. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'm yes. giving today four scenarios, <laughs> and the hope for okay. is the last one. Okay. <laughs> and so, but I will talk about the others as less likely, but then the most likely. Of course, I'll leave to the end. But, but uh, yeah, definitely, that's what we want. Mm -hmm. We want the rapture, and if the rapture is that which will cause America not to be any more a superpower, then amen for that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I don't want to. I don't want to particularly date our interview here, though I've already said it's mm -hmm. it's at our October conference here for 2017. So I think I'm going to proceed with this question, even though I hesitate for a moment. And that is, we've had a. A terrible ordeal um, in our country, as you well know. We've had a mass shooting, which is, frankly, it's we've had them before, but this was a little more startling. And as we speak, there are some things that are not clear, let's put it that way. I hear your updates, and folks, you need to get his electronic updates, JD's as well. Honestly, you do. That's how you stay in touch and understand our times, is through a lot of the kind of presentations that are going on electronically. So I've heard your most recent a few days ago. And you do feel there could be a terror connection to the Las Vegas, possibly. First of all, this morning, three arrests were made. Excuse me. This morning, the news were released that three arrests were made on a completely different case on the attempt to bring another new 9-11 to America. Okay. And it is three people. One is American from New Jersey, one is Pakistani, one is Filipino. And the three of them 
we're planning three things. One is to bomb uh, Times Square. Two, mass shooting in a music concert. Okay. Three, underground the, the, the um, subway uh, bombing there. And um, why do I say that? Because when you take that as a target of ISIS, when you take the May video that they released, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they're targeting Las Vegas, and when you take the amount of weapon and preparation that a person, 64-year-old, had to deal with, and when you know that ISIS normally don't take responsibility on things that they don't do, in fact, the, the Edmonton, Canada terrorist attack from last week was done by someone who had ISIS flag in his That's car, right. yet That's ISIS right. never took responsibility. Never did. Because they, they don't take responsibility for everyone. Now, of course, there's the 1% chance that they did it, they took responsibility because it's a fantastic thing to, that happened for them. But in my eyes, um, from what I know, uh, this had many connections to Islamic terrorism. And the man has been radicalized, was given a new name, Arabic name, El Amriki, you know. Amriki, yeah. Yes, American. the American. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that just, it's, I call it a nation in denial. Because just as, as the San Bernardino and the Orlando mm -hmm. shootings were immediately, they denied any connection to terrorism. And eventually, up until today, nobody's clearly saying it was terrorism, although everybody knows it is. Well, there's a media in denial. There's some government people in denial. Folks like us aren't yeah. in denial. But we regard, folks are relying on the watchman to sound these kinds of warnings. J.D., would you agree with some of the things? Yes, in fact, I, um, it was interesting because I uh, was exchanging text messages with an online member uh, in New York, he heads the uh, anti-terrorism unit uh, there in New York for the NYPD bomb squad, and he made an interesting uh, comment. He said, uh, it, the Islamic State, and I, I refuse, you'll forgive me, <laughs> to <laughs> refer the act to the acronym because I, I, it is yeah, a slap right. in the face of yeah. Israel and especially to use the Levant uh, yes. part of that acronym. Right. So no, that I'm going to call them the Islamic, Islamic State. State, okay? So the Islamic State would not, this was his uh, uh, insight and perspective, very interesting, and it makes sense. They would not take credit for something they didn't do because if it were ever found out, they would lose legitimacy. Okay. And they can't afford to lose legitimacy because the caliphate is at stake. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And you know that when they released their responsibility uh, immediately online on the Arab, in the Arab world, yeah. people started asking them, give us some proof he was a soldier of the caliphate mm -hmm. because, because they were... Even the Arabs were given to the media in America that it has nothing to do with, yeah. and that's when they released a second uh, um, um, claim of responsibility, detailing that the man has been radicalized for the last few months. This is a planned attack. Well, we know it's planned. Now we know. Yeah. And claiming um, his, and that's when they gave him his uh, Islamic martyr's name. And uh, which they only reserve to specific people who do something that uh, of that magnitude, and so I believe that they went above and beyond mm. to say, guys, we're not even. It's not something that we think. We know. It, yeah. It's it is what it is. Now, of course, I'm not. Look, yeah. we're, we're not experts. Yeah. But but what I can tell you is that uh, if you count on the regular media, no. you will never know. Well, what we're talking about is, is ominous. You, you raised some issues uh, that apparently came up today that I'm not aware of. Um, it would be probably good if you shared some of that um, because we're in such perilous times. Um, it's hard not to be fearful just because of all that's playing out and we're spared from God's wrath. We're not spared from man's wrath. Man's wrath is just getting out of control. Having said that, J.D. wrap this up with something, an encouragement yeah. for us, because I don't want to just talk about the darkness, which is overwhelming, but the light shines brightest in the dark. Yes. 
So actually at the conclusion of my yeah. session today, I'm uh, looking forward to and hoping uh, to provide uh, encouragement out of 1 Thessalonians 4 mm -hmm. where the Apostle Paul to a very weary and discouraged and almost to the point of giving way to despair. These, these Thessalonian mm -hmm. Christians were just really struggling. And the heart of the Apostle Paul comes out when he just says, Hey, you guys, I mean, this is a very loose paraphrase, and I'll be very brief, but he just basically says to them, I know you guys are grieving. We don't grieve as those without hope. Mm -hmm. We know the rapture is coming. And the Apostle Paul just says, Here, Here's what's going to happen. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Mm -hmm. And we who are alive and remain. And this goes back, back to my... my statement that were it not for that I would be out of my mind yeah. I would lose my mind and I would lose all hope mm -hmm. but knowing that that trumpet can sound at any time mm -hmm. here's how I say it and here's how I see it when you have that to look forward to it makes whatever you're going through that much easier to get through and by the way uh, when uh, ever we celebrate the communion table, mm. this is what I believe the Savior had in mind when he said, as often as you do mm -hmm. this, do this in remembrance of me. What I uh, see that as is the Lord saying, I want you to remember that that trumpet's going to sound, and this is going to find its ultimate fulfillment mm. in my kingdom, and I eagerly await that. You be encouraged, and you encourage one another. Mm -hmm. This is as bad as it's going to get. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Encourage one another. Um, in the ex exhortation out of Hebrews, I just uh, encourage everyone to encourage, honestly, and particularly in these dark days. Encourage you to check out Prophecy Update, BeholdIsrael.org, OliveTreeViews.org. We try and keep you up to date as best we can, electronically and other ways as well. So I want to thank you for joining us. We'll sign off.